The Spanish word El Camino translates to path or road in English, and this word beautifully embodies the philosophy of Chevrolet's light pickup truck. It was created as a direct response to Ford's similar Ranchero truck. Interestingly, the name El Camino appeared in General Motors patent several years before the pickup was actually available for purchase. Back in 1952, at the Motorama exhibition, General Motors showcased a show car called Cadillac El Camino, and many design elements from that car found their way into the production model of the Cadillac Eldorado two years later. Finally, in 1959 the name El Camino came into use. Similar to Ford Ranchero, Chevy El Camino was based on a passenger car, the two-door station wagon known as the Brookwood. Some design elements were borrowed from the Bel Air as well. In terms of pricing, the latest Chevy pickup occupied a position between more expensive light trucks and wagons, making it a versatile choice. However, unlike the Ranchero which used a reinforced rear suspension from the ranch wagon, El Camino came equipped with a standard passenger car suspension, which limited its payload capacity to just 295 kilograms. El Camino also differed from the Ranchero with its more modest interior and a narrower range of available options, but from a design standpoint, GM's model managed to outshine Ford's. Not that the 1959 El Camino looked incredibly beautiful and attractive, but during that period, General Motors was competing with Chrysler in terms of extravagant design innovations. As a result, El Camino got a rather unusual body styling, with dual headlights and peculiar chrome eyebrows above them, as well as a unique rear end featuring horizontal taillights and powerful, once again horizontal wings over them. While El Camino wasn't the most peculiar Chevy model of 1959, it certainly looked eccentric. Considering its relatively modest payload capacity, it confidently became the first purely image-oriented American pickup, initially created not for heavy work but rather for active leisure, of course, by that time, pickups were already being sold in the States with a strong emphasis on external design. Dodge Sweepside and Chevy Cameo were among them. However, these pickups were true workhorses, unlike El Camino, which had a different purpose. To be fair, it's worth mentioning that the heavy-duty suspension was available as an option, which could increase the payload capacity to half a ton. But that wasn't the main selling point for buyers. The 536 cm long El Camino was designed for an audience that might have preferred a Corvette, but didn't buy one because they needed a sufficiently spacious vehicle for transporting surfboards or diving gear. To ensure that this category of buyers wouldn't be disappointed with the pickup's performance, El Camino came with a wide range of engines, Starting with a basic inline 6 with a mere 135 horsepower, it went all the way up to a 5.7 liter V8, developing between 250 to 325 horsepower depending on the variant. In 1959, the cheapest El Camino could be bought for $2,352. That's approximately $25,000 in today's prices. El Camino started off quite confidently in the market, with over 22,000 units sold in 1959. However, in 1966 sales unexpectedly dropped to 14,000, and GM's management decided that the whole idea of launching this iconic car-truck hybrid was a mistake. By 1961, the pickup was no longer being sold, but that's when the buyers and fans stepped in. Though their numbers were few, they bombarded Chevy dealers with such strong requests that they pleaded with the general manager of Chevrolet sales, James Conlon, to help bring back the El Camino to production. Conlon did everything in his power to make it happen, but he didn't succeed right away. Initially, the company considered launching the second generation of El Camino based on the architecture of the newest compact model, the Chevy 2. However, it turned out that its semi-monocoque architecture was entirely unsuitable for use as a pickup truck. That's when they decided to use the mid-sized A-body frame architecture, which was planned to be upgraded for the 1964 model year for the subsequently legendary Chevy Chevelle. To remind you, American automakers never used the Australian word ute in their advertising materials to refer to light pickup trucks. Ford used phrases like coupe pickup or car pickup for their ranchero, while Chevy went even further, coming up with a new term for the 1964 El Camino. They called it a personal pickup, drawing inspiration from the personal luxury car term Ford used for their Thunderbird. By doing so, 
Chevrolet aimed to downplay the truck aspect of the El Camino and focus on its car-like qualities. It made sense because this vehicle, weighing around one and a half tons and measuring five meters long, shared its technical components, including the chassis, suspension with state-of-the-art airlift shock absorbers, transmissions, and power units, with the two-door Chevelle station wagon. The nominal payload capacity of the El Camino increased to half a ton, but the standard tires were only rated for 318 kg of load. Overall, the handling and ride smoothness of the pickup were similar to those of the Chevelle. However, the absence of weight on the rear axle did show itself during sharp maneuvers or emergency braking. Nevertheless, the El Camino's performance was top-notch and dynamic. If the base model with a 3.2-liter six-cylinder engine could reach a speed of about 100 km per hour in approximately 15 seconds, then the pickup with eight-cylinder engines could go much faster. After all, their power varied from 195 to 300 horsepower, and you even had the option to order the most high-performance GM engine of that time, the LS6 327 V8 with 365 horsepower and 520 newton meters of torque. It provided acceleration to 100 km per hour in just a little over 6 seconds. In 1964 32,500 El Caminos were sold, which was way more than the sales of Ford Ranchero. Though, when compared to nearly 3 million Chevrolet vehicles sold in 64, El Camino's production was quite modest. However, its relatively low manufacturing cost allowed the pickup to feel confident without the threat of sudden discontinuation from the lineup. Moreover, El Camino began attracting customers away from the two-door Chevelle wagon, leading to its eventual discontinuation in 66. During the era of widespread fascination with pony cars and muscle cars, influenced by the baby boomers, most sold El Caminos were equipped with powerful eight-cylinder engines, and this trend intensified with the introduction of the famous GM Big Block 396 V8 engines, delivering between 325 to 375 horsepower in El Camino SS versions. By the way, the abbreviation SS stood for Supersport. At this point, Chevrolet El Camino transformed into a cowboy-styled muscle car, fast, reasonably practical, well-equipped, and stood out from others with its unique cargo design. Sales went up, with over 40,000 El Caminos sold in 68 and almost 50,000 in 69 and 70. In 1971, GMC introduced its own clone called the Sprint, which added an extra 5 to 6,000 annual sales to the El Camino lineup. At the beginning of the 70s, the most powerful engine option for the El Camino was the LS 6454 V8, with a displacement of 7.4 liters, producing 425 horsepower and 645 newton meters of torque according to the old power standards. However, in 1972 there was a transition to new power measurement standards and engine adaptation to unleaded gasoline. As a result, the LS6 figures dropped to 270 horsepower and 529 newton meters of torque. Nevertheless, the 1972 El Camino SS 454 could still accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in less than 7 seconds, especially when equipped with a 4-speed manual transmission. During the 1970s, compact pickups continued to remain quite popular. From 73 to 77, nearly 250,000 El Caminos were sold. Among them, about 18,000 were the top-of-the-line sporty SS models, which were approximately 5.5 meters long. By 1977 El Camino SS was not as powerful and fast as it was in the late 60s and early 70s. Its most potent engine, the 350 V8 with a 5.7-liter capacity, produced only 170 horsepower and 366 newton meters of torque. Nevertheless, it came equipped with cool features, such as 15-inch rally-style wheels with white lettering on the tires, exclusive interior trim with separate sporty vinyl-covered seats, special body decals, reinforced suspension, and more, for the SS variant, as well as any other El Camino trim. A wide range of additional options was available, including tinted glass, air conditioning, cruise control, power windows, as well as a limited slip differential, radiator, and battery, among many other things.
In 1978, Chevrolet El Camino and its sibling GMC Sprint, along with all other representatives of the mid-size GMA body architecture, underwent a downsizing. During this process, Sprint was renamed Caballero. The overall length of the pickup truck's bodies decreased by approximately 30 centimeters. Surprisingly, the wheelbase slightly increased during the downsizing to 297 centimeters. Initially, in 1978 and 1979, Annual sales of the El Camino remained quite high, exceeding 50,000 units. This led to the introduction of several interesting optional packages, such as the Royal Knight or Black Knight, which mainly featured different body declarations. However, starting from 1980, the sales of the El Camino gradually declined. The era of mass enthusiasm for Western and cowboy romance, which had supported the interest in car-based pickups during the 1970s, came to an end and along with its departure, El Camino became less popular. In 1987, only around 14,000 El Camino units were sold, and in 1988, the model was no longer available for purchase. GMC Caballero also left the market at the same time. The total number of Chevy El Camino, GMC Sprint, and Caballero vehicles sold from 1959 to 1987 amounted to 1,520,000 units. In 1995 General Motors tried to revive the El Camino by presenting a concept of the same name, which was based on the architecture of the Caprice station wagon and incorporated some design elements from the Impala SS, however, the pickup never made it into production. Nowadays, the most valuable El Camino models are the first generation ones from 1959-1960. These cars have an average auction value of $58,000. The third-generation models, produced between 1968 and 1972, are generally much more affordable, with an average price of $34,000. However, it's worth noting that some of these vehicles, when in perfect exhibition condition, can sometimes be sold at auction for $100,000 or even $200,000.